Constipated. <laughs> Table. I'm Jim. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about us. Us stars Lupita Nyongo, Winston Duke, Shahadi Wright Joseph, and Evan Alex. Written and directed by Jordan Peele. Us centers around. Uh, the story of this girl named Adelaide in 1986 and she goes to the beach and she's on the boardwalk with her family in Santa Cruz and she wanders off from her family comes across this house of mirrors and this evil doppelganger fast forward to modern time her family at a beach house on the outskirts of Santa Cruz around the same area with her family gets invaded by the evil doppelgangers the evil There's doppelganger. a family in our driveway. You want to get crazy? We can get crazy. So let's talk about the good. I know Lupita's gonna get all the love, and rightfully so. But I thought Winston Duke did he pretty good. He did a good. really good job. And obviously, there's biblical names attached to all oh, of this, yes. and then there's this Jeremiah 11:11 11, 11 that you see throughout. Should we read them the passage? Go ahead, read the passage. Yeah. This is brought to you by Peter Griffin. Go ahead and read the passage. <laughs> Therefore, thus saith the Lord. Behold, I bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. The rapture, yo. I like that it was it was more complex than a typical horror or thriller. Oh yeah, it was definitely different. When they show up, I'm like, why didn't they just kill him right away? Right. But then you find out, you know, she kind of wants to toy with with them. But at what cost? When you find out later why, though. Yeah, well, of course, sp the spoiler of it. When she goes into the house of mirror and s mirrors and sees the evil doppelganger. As a kid. As a kid, she switches places with yeah. her. She drags her down into the tunnels. There's a few lines at the opening that tells you there's these tunnels under the, the United States. But there were some really creepy moments in this, I thought. Like, there's this white family. White there's family. always a white family. But there's these twin girls, and they're standing at, like, this kind of loft area above yeah. where the, the living room is, and they're talking to their parents because the power went out. And all of a sudden, one of their evil doppelgangers shows up and stabs him in the throat. The, the mm -hmm. music for this movie was really good. I thought the direction of this movie was, was pretty good. Definitely. Not better than Get Out. I mean, you ha people are going to be like, well, you can't compare the two. Well, I have to compare the two because it's both his works of art. Right. Not he comparing wrote them the two both, movies. he directed them both. And this film, obviously, to me, deals with duality. We are our own worst enemies, right? I would think that's probably We have factual... our good side, then we have our shadow side. The good thing about this film is that there's so many layers, right? The bad thing about this film is that there's so many <laughs> layers. I thought the kids were really well in this. The twist was good. I thought, even though I called it 35 minutes into the movie, but then I was like, wait, maybe not. I think they give you these little clues in there. Yeah. Like when she kills, she ends up killing the, one of the white twin girls and she's do doing like this snarling thing. One of the things that these doppelgangers do is they, they can't speak except for Hers. Lupita. Yeah, because I mean, you find because out later she's because she's the real, one. the real girl. She starts like snarling after she kills him. And I'm like, wait a second, huh? Let's talk about the bad. This movie, I was talking about this movie has layers. It's like an onion. Peel it back, here's another layer. The problem with onions, when you peel them too much, they fucking smell. I felt like he had so many ideas, and I don't think that he very clearly found the answer. Right. I, I think that this is obviously a political statement. It started out with a political statement, because you see the, the hands 1986 video. The hands across America. Yeah, because yeah, they're going to stretch all the way across America, and that's like what they do at the end. In all red? Except for the Jeremiah guy, who picked up the real one's jacket, apparently. When did that happen? Did he grab it out the back of that ambulance? Yeah. Which, speaking of that ambulance, why did they not cover the dead body? That's it a is, first responder It is permit. procedure that you have to cover the dead body, at least with a sheet. If he's not in a bag, you don't leave him out in the open on the stretcher while you're putting him in the bag. Have no covered area. You're letting kids in the back of cars see this thing. 
That is traumatic. So her big plan was to kill everybody. And just replace them. And just replace them well, with all the shadow people who was were her tired a- of eating bunny meat. I had a few problems. Where did she get all those gold scissors from? Right. Did she put in a big order? Where'd office she get all the red suits? Where'd they get the red jumpsuit apparatus? <laughs> How was this so coordinated with everybody throughout the entire U.S. Throughout the entire U.S. Did she... That's why it took so long to plan. She had to walk the entire tunnel. Now, this... They say that this was a government experiment gone wrong as a means to control people. So, essentially, these people, the dark side or the, the shadow, shadow... The tethered... The tethered people aren't exactly right. I don't know if you really caught my comment when we left the theater, but were they all roached? People like, under the stairs. Right. I mean, that's what it reminded me of. For such a well-coordinated attack, these the doppelgangers were really sloppy. They don't have, like, their motions or whatever. There's something off about them, right? One of them shows up at someone's house. They're not getting shot because it seemed like they killed everybody they came right. across. It lost me a lot whenever the white doppelganger family showed up. I mm-hmm. was like, mm. Because they didn't even seem like they cared about going and doing the rest. Yeah. They came just for their family, their doppelgangers, their real people, and killed them. And then some of the movie, most of the movie, f- felt like it was just thrown in there, and it wasn't connected. It was like, oh, this is a scary part. This could be scary, or this could be like kind of crazy. Let's put that in. And it just didn't fit to me. There's a point early in the movie where they're going to the beach house, mm-hmm. and Adelaide is like... She doesn't want to go to the beach. She doesn't want to go to Santa Cruz because of what happened. They've had that beach house. Yeah. They've, they've lived there. They've been there before. So why is it such a surprise? Like, oh shit, well, the Santa Cruz beach is here. I can't sit here and talk about these doppelgangers. Essentially, they're living our lives underneath in some tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> if I drop a quarter and, and go to pick it up, this guy yeah. sc- might not drop a quarter, but he's going to mimic but my kind of yeah. movement. When they're at the amusement park... There's these people on the tilt-a-whirl, and they're just spinning around in a closet, and other people on a roller coaster that are just standing there like this. And it was so funny, and me and him might have laughed in the theater, and might have been the only two laughing. (laughs) The biggest thing for a thriller, for a horror movie, whatever, it wasn't scary. I never felt a sense of like, oh shit, this just hit the fan. Right. It didn't. Even when Red, or... Even when evil Lupita steals the the sun, yeah, I was never like, oh man, now she's got him, because they all split up right. away from each other, and I'm like, why is nobody watching the boy? So we find out at the end that she gets switched out, that it's the real her downstairs. For one, where'd she find the key to get out of those handcuffs? Did one of the other tethered just suddenly find a key? <laughs> why couldn't she talk better than she was? And also, speaking of the boy. Why is he the only one that can get shadowed? Because the real Jason figures out, if I do this, the shadow does that. He backs up and he goes, walks back into the fire. Yeah. But, I mean, the, the real boy just walks into yeah. evil Lupita's arms and she walks off. Pretty much. While they're kind of just not doing anything. They're like, Jason! Well, maybe it's because he's actually the real Jason. And she screams no. Whenever that boy burns up. Whenever the evil Jason burns up. The final... The fight, whack. She like danced around and was kicking regular Lapita's ass. Well, I guess the tethered Lapita's ass. So who, what? Adelaide. <laughs> hey, my brain hurt. My brain hurt. And then all of a sudden she's like in a corner and decides she wants to come out and swing at her. Right. And then that's it. And then she's she like senses her behind her or something, uses her sixth sense. Clearly she watched, well. <laughs> How does she find them at the end? How does she know that they're in the back of that ambulance? Does she find a phone and call them? (laughs) Red is the only one who can talk, so she essentially has the microphone. And she convinces all these people to kill. Not that they're living a good life or anything, because they're having to eat rabbits and raw. raw. It's raw! Raw. Could you imagine Gordon's shadow down there? It's raw! The fucking... The fucking bunny is raw! Oh, please. Fuck oh, off. God. Fuck Speaking off. Speaking of the boat scenes. <laughs> so we already get one boat scene. Yo, dog, I heard you <laughs> like boat scenes. When you see the white family again, and his doppelganger chases Gabe onto their boat, and he starts getting on the boat and, like, screaming, like, 
Is that not the mating call? <laughs> <laughs> so at the end, after almost everybody is killed, or whatever, how whoever is killed, it shows you a line of people all holding hands, because the hands across America was Red's objective. And so everybody's holding hands at the end, going across the United States, which was what the mission was back then, against the hunger, or whatever the fuck they were after. And then helicopters show up. We don't know if they're military helicopters. We don't know if, if they're, they're military. Media. Why don't they just mow them down? My final thought. I think he overthought himself in right. this one. And not that everything needs to be tied up in a nice little bow, but something has to be. I will watch this again, and I'll continue to support Jordan Peele because I think that this movie had potential to be Definitely. something really good. I appreciate his ability to create something different. People were saying, oh, it's the greatest movie of all time. Greatest horror movie of all time. Mm. Pump the brakes. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It left me with more questions than answers. Right now, I have to score this a 7.5 out of 10. I think the problem with this movie is that it was too ambiguous. It was almost ambiguous for the sake of being ambiguous and obscure. Definitely liked the film. It was very original. He did miss the mark in some places. The writing was still pretty good. The direction was still good. The acting was great. There wasn't quite enough exposition in a lot of it. You get a lot of exposition at the end with the two Adelaides. There's too many questions left. I still enjoyed the film. It wasn't scary. It was a little creepy. I would score it a 7.7. .7. Ooh, I want to know what you guys thought. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Leave a message in the comments. Let us know what you thought. Hit those likes. You already know what the fuck it is. Press that subscribe, and we will check you out next time only on Rounds of the Night's Table.